In this video, we're going to show you four different ways to diagnose a bad catalytic converter and whether you need to replace it or not. Let's get to it. A catalytic converter is an important part of your car's exhaust system that's located somewhere between the engine and the muffler. It contains a honeycomb mesh consisting of rare earth materials that when exhaust gases pass through them chemically reacts to reduce emissions. This is also why it's so expensive, as it contains platinum, palladium, and rhodium. So before replacing it, you need to make sure it actually needs replacing. There's four easy ways to check if your catalytic converter is still functioning properly. You can check the error codes with an OBD2 scanner, test the exhaust back pressure, use thermal imaging, or listen to the sound it makes. On average, a catalytic converter lasts about 10 years or 100,000 miles. So after about 25 years of service, it's definitely time to replace it and put in a new one. The first test you can perform is with an OBD2 scanner. If your catalytic converter isn't reducing emissions as effectively as it should, the oxygen sensor will trigger the P0420 code. To check if you have error codes, all you need is a simple, affordable OBD2 scanner. Turn the ignition on and locate the OBD2 port. It's a 16-pin trapezoidal-shaped connector which is usually located under the dashboard on the driver's side. If you can't find it, you can always look up its location in your car's owner's manual. Then plug it in and follow the instructions on your screen. Oh, and this is only for cars from 1996 onwards, when OBD2 became mandatory in the United States. So if your car is older, it probably won't have it. Although this error code normally triggers the check engine light, it never hurts to read the error codes even if the check engine light isn't lit. Then select the read code option and the scanner will display the error codes if there are any. But even if you have the P0420 code, it might just be the O2 sensor that's faulty and not the catalytic converter. So if the next tests indicate that the catalytic converter is still okay, first replace the sensor which is a lot cheaper than to replace the catalytic converter itself. And then test again. Next you can test the exhaust back pressure. Excessive exhaust back pressure is caused by an exhaust restriction. The honeycomb mesh inside your catalytic converter can get clogged over the years, causing a restriction and increase the exhaust back pressure. The most common symptoms of an exhaust restriction are a lack of power, poor fuel economy, and failing to accelerate past a certain speed or RPM. But luckily, it's super easy to test for exhaust restrictions. You can do so by measuring pressure, vacuum, or checking the exhaust temperature. To measure both the pressure and the vacuum, you only need this one handy gauge which we'll link to in the description under the video. You can use it to measure loads of stuff and it comes with lots of adapters and even a rubber cone to press into a hole so you're sure it will fit. But to measure the pressure, we need to use the O2 sensor hole that's located somewhere on the exhaust between the engine and the catalytic converter. Ours, unfortunately, is difficult to reach, hidden all the way under there and only accessible from underneath but usually it's a lot easier to get to. And remember, if you have a V-shaped engine layout, you need to test both exhausts for restrictions. To connect the gauge to the O2 sensor hole, we only need these two adapters. The big one goes in the hole itself, and the small one connects the big adapter to the rubber hose. And then you can connect it to the gauge itself to get the pressure reading. Now first grab a wrench and loosen the O2 sensor. Then remove it completely and hang it somewhere to the side. Grab the adapters and screw them in the hole. Connect one end of the rubber tube to the adapter and finally connect the other end to the gauge itself. After making sure everything is clear of the moving serpentine belt and pulleys, start the engine. Ideally, there should be no or almost no back pressure. In general, it should be below 1.5 PSI at idle and below 3 PSI at 2500 RPM. Anything above usually indicates a restriction in your exhaust. So in our case, we clearly have no restriction. Measuring the vacuum is as easy as measuring the pressure. You only need to locate the intake manifold vacuum line. To locate the intake manifold, follow the air intake and it will lead you straight to it. The air intake leads air directly to the intake manifold, which in turn is connected to the engine. Somewhere on the intake manifold you'll find a rubber vacuum line, which sometimes after an additional connection like in our case, leads to this large soup can shaped cylinder which is the vacuum reservoir. However, the setup will look different depending on the make and model of your car. Carefully disconnect it and attach the gauge to that line. In this case, we need one of these adapters to connect to the vacuum line. Just push it in and attach the rubber line going to the gauge. And once again, make sure nothing is in the way of the moving belt and pulleys. 
For this test, you also need to look at idle, but more importantly, also look at what happens when you rev the engine shortly, which we'll do by hand on the throttle body like so. Now start your engine and look at the gauge. The vacuum should stay in the green at idle ranging from 17 to 22 inches of mercury, which it does. So the first part of the test is already normal. The second part of the vacuum test is to shortly rev the engine. When you do, you should see it drop down all the way to zero. If your car does not have between 17 and 22 inches of mercury, and it doesn't drop to zero when revving, there's something wrong and your exhaust might be restricted, which is often caused by a clogged catalytic converter. To detect an exhaust obstruction by measuring temperature, you need a thermal camera. We've got this super small thermal camera that plugs in your phone and is easy to work with. We'll link to it in the description below so you can easily find it. You can use this to test for a restriction in your exhaust system as well as to see if your catalytic converter is working. First, drive your car for about 15 minutes so it reaches operating temperature. Idling your car does not warm up your catalytic converter enough for it to start working properly. And because we had to first remove the skid plate again after the test drive so we can see the catalytic converter, it has unfortunately cooled down a bit. With your car warmed up, compare the area before and after the catalytic converter. If the inlet has the same temperature as the outlet, the catalytic converter doesn't work properly or isn't at operating temperature yet because the chemical reaction in the catalytic converter causes a temperature increase. In our case, the outlet is still a good 100 degrees warmer, even after cooling down a bit, which is normal. But if the inlet is hotter than the outlet, there's probably an obstruction. Finally, you can also sometimes hear if something is wrong with your catalytic converter. When your exhaust suddenly vibrates when you start or rev your engine and you hear something like this. It sounds like something is rattling or seemingly loose in your catalytic converter, which could indicate that bits of the honeycomb mesh have broken off and are making that sound. You can listen by ear or you can use an automotive stethoscope to pinpoint where the sound is coming from. It might also be something in your muffler, either from the muffler itself or the broken parts from the catalytic converter have been blown into the muffler. If that's the case, you want to remove the muffler and shake the loose bits out. And if that doesn't work, replace it entirely with the catalytic converter. And now you know how to diagnose your catalytic converter. We're going to show you how to replace it in a separate video. So stay tuned. And we also have videos on how to replace your entire exhaust system or just your muffler on our channel. So make sure to check those out as well. We've put a link to them in the description under the video so you can easily find them. Thanks for watching. More videos are on the way, so be sure to like, comment, and share this video. It really helps us out a lot. Our content wouldn't be possible without the amazing support of our patrons and YouTube channel members, whose crew you can join via the links in the description to see our schedule, vote on future videos, get behind the scenes sneak peeks, and much more. This is Classic Car Maintenance, and we'll see you on the next one.